Hi, I'm Andrew Glazer. Thanks so much for tuning in today, because I'd like to teach you how to write an equation for a rational function with these given characteristics of vertical asymptotes at x being negative 4, x being then also negative 1, and the x-intercepts of 1 and 5, and the y-intercept of 7. So just keep in mind that a rational function is simply a function where you have some polynomial in the numerator and some polynomial in the denominator. All right, so you have some like factors or, you know, x minus 2 or 1 or 18 or wh whatever it is, you know, times x minus or plus, whatever other terms we, we need, okay, in both the numerator and the denominator. So now let's take a look at the vertical asymptotes first. All right, vertical asymptotes first. These are basically going to indicate the x values that the function cannot have, okay? All vertical asymptotes indicate the x values that the function cannot have. So the only thing that's going to mess up this kind of polynomial, or excuse me, this rational function, is if the denominator is 0, right? You can't divide anything by 0. Watch, go to your calculator, do 5 divided by 0, and it's going to yell at you. Error. <clears throat> That'd be so much more fun if it came with sound effects. <clears throat> right? So it ain't going to work. It isn't going to work. So you can't divide by 0. Okay, it's an error. So that's basically what's going on over here. You cannot divide this uh, function by zero. And that's where the vertical asymptotes will be. So you know that x can't be negative four. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an expression that details where x cannot be four. Imagine I write this x plus four. If I plug in negative four now for x, which is what it says, then what does this thing become? Become zero. That's the point. The denominator is zero. It's undefined. That's where the vertical asymptotes are. And I'm going to then multiply that by the other one. Same thing. I'm going to do x then plus 1. Why? Well, because if x is negative 1 and I plug that in and add 1 to it, it becomes 0. Same thing. So, you know, thinking about a shortcut, you basically just take these vertical asymptotes, just switch their signs. All right? You're basically going back to the factors, so to speak. And that's it. That's what you got to do. Now, x-intercepts are next. And guess what? The x-intercepts are now where the y is 0, or the function's value is 0. Okay, so what that means is that this function's got to be 0. This thing has got to be 0. And if the left is 0, then guess what the right's got to be? 0 as well. And what results in a 0? Only if the numerator now is 0. Not the denominator, because if the denominator is 0, remember, the calculator screams at you. Okay, so now it's going to turn out that we're going to do the same thing here, right? We're going to do where if x is going to be 1. When x is 1, the whole function goes to 0. What that means is now I'm going to do x minus 1 as an expression. The reason being is because if x is 1, and it's telling me then the function's value is 0, when I plug 1 in here, this whole thing becomes what? 0. And that's the point. The numerator is becoming 0. Okay? Guess what you're going to do with the next term? Simply do the same thing. Do x minus 5. Okay? So it's a very similar pattern. So that's what you do with your x-intercepts. You're going to take them find those factors for the numerator, vertical asymptotes, find those factors for the denominator, and then please save the y-intercept for the end because you can't really do it at the beginning, all right? Now, it turns out for the y-intercept, remember, the y-intercept is the location for the function where the x value is going to be 0, and the function's value has to be 7, okay? Now, in order to figure this out, I'm going to add a little coefficient in here because I need to guarantee that the left-hand side will equal the right-hand side. And you'll see in a second, my friend. So the function's value at the y-intercept for this problem is 7. So put in your 7. Then write your little c for constant. Okay? And then all of the x values have to be 0. So plug in 0 for all of the x's. All right? And just keep plugging on away. All right? Good life lesson there. Just plug away. Don't let anything stop you. Just keep going. The only person that can stop you is yourself. Don't do it. Don't let it happen. So now the numerator. We got a negative 1 times a negative 5. That's going to basically be a positive 5. And then in the denominator, we got 4 times 1, right? So that's just going to simply be 4. So now, as you can see, if I didn't have this little c here, uh, 7 doesn't equal 5 fourths, right? So that's the whole thing. I had to solve for this little unknown, this little constant. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by the reciprocal, right? 4 over 5, that whole fraction just goes bye-bye. Okay, and then whatever I do to the left, I got to do to the right. So I'm going to do the same thing, multiply that side. All right, and 7 times uh, 4 is going to be 28 over 5 
and that's the C value, all right? So now I have all the pieces I kind of need. I got everything now. So the C value is, again, going to be 28 over 5. Now you can leave that over here, 28 over 5, or you can kind of, you know, multiply it on in. It, it totally depends. And you can probably leave your answer like this, but normally they want to see everything in fully, like, foiled form. They don't want to see the factors. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write 28 over 5 times. Now let's FOIL this. x times x is going to be x squared. Let's do this in our heads. x times negative 5 is negative 5x, and then negative 1 times x is negative 1x, and when you sum those together, you get negative 6x. You can basically just take this and this, add them together, and put an x. All right? And then negative 1 times negative 5 is going to be a positive 5. Boom. Now same thing with the denominator. Let's do this quickly. x times x, x squared, 4 plus 1 is going to be 5, but throw an x on it, and then 4 times 1 is going to be 4. And you're finished. That's the equation. Now if you want to see it, right, you go to your graph. Plug it on in. Okay, do 28. So I'll put parentheses, 28 divided by 5, close them. And then I'm going to open up a new set of parentheses. Okay, because I want to now take the, I'll do a double parentheses. We'll do two, uh, x squared. Okay, x squared minus 6x. We don't need all the parentheses here, but I'd like to put them just for good measure. And then divide that now by open parentheses x squared plus 5x. Okay, plus 5x. And then plus 4. And then close the double parentheses and hit your graph. Now I zoomed out on this thing a little bit, but this should probably be uh, okay. So here, let's see what we got. All right. Now it says, it might be hard to see, probably should have uh, went up there a little bit, but we have vertical asymptotes, meaning the function will never obtain the value of x is equal to negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you kind of see how like, you see how this is approaching it, but it's never it's never going to touch. It's just going to keep on going up. So that's one vertical asymptote. And then the other is that x is equal to negative 1. And you see how this is going to touch it and approach, but never, never, uh, excuse me, it's not going to touch. It just approaches. All right. Now, the x-intercepts. As you can see, it's crossing the x-axis over here on this side. It's not kind of, it doesn't have a lot of detail here, but we can almost see it, right? X is here one, that's one of them. And then it says at five, two, three, four, five. Look, it crosses there. And then it says the y-intercept of seven, and it looks, that's about good. I, I mean, you might say, well, how the hell do I know that? This is 50 units, right? So that's about seven uh, units up. If you want, you can also go to your table, hit second graph, go to your table, and look, no, no. When x is 0, y is 7? No. Right? There it is. Okay? And, oh, look. When x is 5, y is 0? No way. Right? Look. 5 and 0. Okay, we could keep up. Wait, 1 and 0? x, 1? No. No. Right? See how cool this is? All right, it's fun. You might say, man, this sucks. Well, it might. It might. It might not be the most beautiful or interesting thing in the world. But also remember that the better you get at something, the more interesting it becomes, right? Imagine sitting down at a piano if you don't know how to play. You're going to sit at it, you're going to hit a couple of notes and say, this sucks. Yeah, it does suck because you can't play anything. But once you have the dedication and the, and the persistence to get better and practice, and you start composing, you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and you start building your way up to Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, then it starts to become more fun, more interesting. You can compose a song. It's the same thing here, okay? If it feels frustrating, you're not very good at it, that might be in and of itself why this sucks. Just stay determined, stay focused, okay? Don't lose sight of the goal. Thanks for tuning in.